Okay, welcome everybody. This is podcast two. Uh, we're talking about Utah football again today. Uh, first off, we just want to thank you guys for the support. Crazy. Got way more views than we thought we would. Apparently people liked it. So <laughs> I did not think anyone would be watching that first podcast, but we're oh, yeah. back at it again next yeah, week. Yeah, almost 200 views. And so yeah, here we are with episode two. Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, we've been talking about this all week. Like we've been... Uh-huh. Like, we're kind of like little kids on Christmas, like looking at the view count and everything. It's really cool, really fun. Uh, we're just super excited to continue mm-hmm. to talk about our amazing football team and uh, about their season previously and the season to come. We're, yeah. It's going to be mm-hmm. such a blast today. Yeah, and we all love it. We would do this even if we got zero views. Exactly. So it's just the cherry on top. Just like talking to talk football. We're already doing it. Like, oh, we're, yeah. already doing it. We're, like, we're already doing it. We're like, why not just record it and like... Who knows what could happen? You know, it's a little more structured, fun. but yeah. before the podcast, we had to stop ourselves because we've been talking about Utah football for like two hours already <laughs> before starting recording. Yeah, we, we're like, dude, we gotta wait. We're, so we're yeah, excited to some stuff for the pod. Mm-hmm. Um, as you see, we kind of upgrade a little bit. We just want to kind of show what we want to talk about today. Um, when we're starting a recap of last year, kind of what we did a little bit last podcast, like very seldomly, we kind of talked mm-hmm. a lot about the, the next upcoming season. Um, but I think it was just a season of miracles, truly. Oh, seriously. Um, losing Ty Jordan of Christmas of 2020. Was it 2020 or 2020? I think it was 2020, yeah. And then Aaron Lowe, obviously him passing away during the, the bye week of yeah, the season. It's unreal. It was um, love, a miracle itself that like, we had that bye week then. Mm-hmm. But, um, miracle we even continued to play. Exactly. Truly. Yeah. yeah, truly. Mm-hmm. Um, we were watching some of Ty's highlights as free suits come to get our mindset in Utah oh. football and they do the special and we, we, we definitely miss him now and we'll miss him forever. He's on a mm-hmm. go trajectory, man. Oh, seriously. He would have been so good for Utah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to pull up our last year's schedule really quick just for a visual to look at. Yeah, as you see, like the beginning of the season was... We could even... One thing we could do, I didn't think, that we could go through the games kind of and like... Can we do this this year to win? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what worked for us, and can we do that again? And then, yeah. what should we not do in our losses? That's a great yeah. idea. Like, I think like the, those first three games kind of were sour. We were State. Mm-hmm. We need to win. Like, it's obviously we won that game. Pretty soon, had even then, we gave up. We gave up seventeen. Yeah. Weaver State. Yeah. yeah, Weaver State. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a game. Like, come on. Like, we we won mm-hmm. by a large margin, but it's it's a team that shouldn't even be in. Should be scoring on us, truly. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. at BYU, as we all know. Just a bad game. Yeah, you know, young team, we just plan. weren't ready. Yeah, nothing was set. The O-line was having problems. And same as San Diego State. And, you know, Rising came in. Rising couldn't almost save brought us. it back. Almost brought it back, but couldn't couldn't eventually save us. We were in a little bit too much of a of a hole. And so, well, obviously, that's a difficult start to the season. Well, truly, like, to. that BYU game was probably the start for people. Probably a good chunk of our defense and offense of the most the loudest and biggest game they've ever played in their mm-hmm. life at that point in time you know like know. these, these yeah. people they, they, these, a lot of these freshmen came in and during the COVID season they didn't have a lot true. of people playing a lot of people coming to the games they go at to La- Lavelle Edward Saban and playing at BYU in one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football yeah, so that's a big game to come in and, and expect to dominate you know yeah I think the COVID year affected them but for a different reason I don't really think the environment was really that hostile. Like, it really doesn't get that loud in that stadium. But sure. I just think it was the fact that we didn't have the COVID year. We didn't have that whole year for people. We didn't have these positions set. You yeah, know, true. Mm-hmm. we didn't have our best five linemen out there. You know, we didn't have everyone at the position that would be most advantageous to their success. Mm-hmm. And I really think that was the biggest factor in that one and two start. And once we got that figured out, you know, off to the races. Exactly. And then Washington State, this was a pretty good game. Yeah. I mean, look at the box score. We fumbled a million that. times in this game. <laughs> yeah. So many. Hmm. Yeah, this one was a nice kind of get back on track, you know. But obviously, really the storyline of this game is tragedy struck right after. Uh-huh. You know, that's really the storyline yeah. of the Washington State game. Is that, yeah, like it was a win. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't really a dominating win. It was kind of one that we just lucked into almost. Exactly. But, yeah, the tragedy was Aaron Lowe. You know, unfortunately mm-hmm. losing his life to an act of violence. Um, yeah, but that kick started us into probably one of the best stretches of our season. I think, think a 9-2 oh, close. Yeah. Unbelievable. One of the biggest 
one of the biggest games of that year was that the USC game right after that bye week and Aaron Lowe's the situation with Aaron Lowe. Um, what an amazing game, you know. Cam came out there and really kind of showed that he's mm -hmm. not someone to take lightly. He came into San Diego State and he played really, really well. Obviously, led the team to three overtimes and we almost won that game. Yeah. You know, we weren't supposed to. We weren't supposed to be in those that game at the end. We truly at the, uh -huh. at the end. And Cam came in in the USC and really kind of showed up. And first time we ever win at the Coliseum in over a mm -hmm. hundred years. Yeah, That's this huge. was when Cam. I really went from like, oh, he's a good quarterback to like. Wow, this guy's an incredible quarterback. Because I knew he was good from the San Diego State game. I really liked how he played. But the USC game, I'm like, he can pass. He can run. He's a great leader. Like, this is our guy. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. The true alpha dog of the team is exactly. Coach Wayne. Yeah. yeah. As you saw, like, in our little recap of what, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to have some, like, highlight plays. And one of them that we didn't, we didn't put down but was a very influential play of the season was Cam Rising's run to the end zone. Yeah. And I think it was a third quarter. Mm -hmm. Broke, broke many Throwing tackles. guys off him, the spin move into the end zone. And really, the flea flicker too. The yeah. flea flicker. Those two, those two plays kind of like set us up to like, wow, like this guy's serious. And kind of opened our eyes to one of the better seasons that we've ever had. And mm -hmm. it kind of all started um, with that game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so moving on, Arizona State, uh, to me, this was the turning point. I think USC was a little bit of a turning point, but I feel like we were just so amped up after the death that we came out so strong. But we and didn't really know who we were. Having Aaron's mom come exactly like five yeah. times, you know, like he wants you to go out and win. Like, how do you not go out there and dominate against you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like that. That was a given win. Like as much as it probably wasn't, but like looking back at it now, there's no way we're losing that game. Yeah. That. But for me, I feel like this Arizona State game is the game that gave us our identity. You know, this is the one that really started things off for me. Mm -hmm. Because obviously being now 21-7 at home to a ranked team, they were 5-1, and one, you know, we were like, oh, crap, man, this season might be yeah. lost, you know. Arizona State wins that game, more than likely they win the Pac-12 South. I think the mm -hmm. graphic that he's been put up was like 90% chance. Yeah. Because they had been undefeated in conference play up to that point. They would have beaten us already. Um, I think they beat UCLA as well yeah. to that point. So we gave USC biggest, a loss. You know. Yeah, exactly. And so two of their biggest rivals at that point for the Pac-12 South had already lost. And so the way we turned that around and scored four straight TD drives and 28 unanswered points in the mm -hmm. second half, to me, was just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that game. I felt like that was our defense started clicking in the second half there. We had like three or four sacks that game. It was great defensive performance. And then it's just like Tanner was saying, if we lose that game, it's like, well, maybe we're just not a very good team this year. You know, like maybe we'll just be happy to make a bowl game. Yeah. But fighting back from that deficit and just our team getting that toughness back. Like, I feel like we got our swagger back. Uh, yeah. We got it back with USC, but like we really got it back with Arizona State. He wasn't a fraud after this game. Exactly. It's like yeah. we're, we're that team. Yeah, but that leads us into a devastating loss to Oregon State. And, like, honestly, the offense in that Oregon State game looked great. Oh, the defense was what let us down. I honestly think... Couldn't get a push on, yeah, the, we, on the line. Yeah, we killed in the them. trenches. I mean, we lost it basically on the two pump blocks that they had. Mm -hmm. You know, like... That's horrible. I, I, it's atrocious. Yeah, Ridiculous. I think we looked over this team a little bit, which we will not do this year. Uh -huh. I think uh -huh. that... We're going to come stuff on the throat. You know, we're coming out with <laughs> against Oregon I State mean, this year. I mean, beating USC on the road and Arizona State in a great comeback we win felt at home. Good. Like, you know, we were probably focused on UCLA at home, like our Pac-12 South mm -hmm. rival. Like, we looked over them. They were clearly the better team that day. We could oh, not stop sure. them. And, yeah, they got us, man. It was bad loss. It was, it was kind of um, crazy to think about. They beat us on the ground. I yeah, know. which never happens. It's it like, was weird. This this is like this Utah this Utah game right here was like, what is this Utah I team? I know. We've always been elite running a running team and a, a team that can stop the run without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And then this our defense was was our was the reason why we won games. Yeah. But at this point yeah. at this point it's like our offense is the only reason why we're in this game. So, yeah. And our defense is terrible and our run game is our run mm -hmm. defense is Atrocious. Yeah. And you I know, mean, our fourth cool. fourth quarter goal, our our fourth down goal line plays killed us, too. Oh, we yeah, needed to truly. put those in. We missed so many of those. Truly. It was so weird watching the Oregon State game. It was like a role reversal. Yeah. Usually it's like, okay, we're eating up the clock. Like, we're running it on them. Then this time, That's our job. Like, we're scoring through the air, passing really quick. Then they're, like, 
ball control. Like, I was like, what is happening? Yeah, it, it, just it, was, it was so weird. It was not what Utah football was. Yeah, it was so weird. At this kinda, point, you kind of showed, like, a future of what Utah football can be. Yeah. At, at this point, it was really strange because we were 4-3. and three. We'd had some pretty high highs, you know, uh-huh. beating USC and Arizona State. Um, and we had some pretty low lows, losing mm-hmm. to BYU and Oregon State, two teams we should not have lost to. Exactly. Yeah. Like and so we're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Who were we? Yeah. Who were we at this point of the season? We're four and three. Yeah. It's like, are we even like, like, are we gonna even compete in the South this year? Like, yeah, we go win, probably beat our number one and two like contenders here, like outside yeah, of it's UCLA. Like we've got those wins behind us, but, but like, like, if we're gonna drop one to Oregon State, we can drop one to anything. Exactly. exactly. You know. Like, Oregon State was not a team that we were afraid of until later on in the year. Like, okay, this team was actually I mean, when's the last time before this year that we lost to Oregon State? Exactly. It's been a yeah. while, you like, know? They, they weren't really at any, anybody that we were afraid of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and they kind of showed it that, like, their team, they, they kind of... Yeah. And so they, and these next two were, games, I feel like we came out with a passion and a fervor. UCLA and Stanford, obviously both pretty dominant wins. Um, this is when we reestablished ourselves. We said, okay, you know, the beginning of the year has been chaotic. We've had our ups and downs, but now we're back. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. having that um, ceremony for Ty and Aaron in that UCLA game really kind of cemented greatness for this year, in my eyes. At least we say, like, oh, the Arizona State game, State game we, we that's when we really start change. Or that USC game, that's freaking really changed. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think this is right here is when everything fell into place. I and agree with that. I, at this point, we come out here, win this game by a, a good margin, and kind of dominate them yeah. throughout the game. Um, I, I, I I don't see us losing to anyone at that point, mm-hmm. like, coming the rest of the season. Yeah, I was at that UCLA game, and we came out with fire for the Ty and Aaron, the unveiling of that banner. Like, our team came out strong for that. It was yeah. a super emotional game, and the, we grinded that game. There's no way we were going to lose. The mm-hmm. day that they unveiled the Ty George and Aaron Lowe banner, it just was not no happening. Chance, yeah, yeah, that USC and UCLA game. There's you, you, you simulate that a hundred times. We're winning ninety nine. Yeah, I just those. I knew it against UCLA that we weren't going to lose. I you could just feel it there. We weren't going to lose the game. It never felt like it was yeah. in doubt from the very beginning. I I have some breaking news really quick. Um, actually, um, the Big Ten just announced they will not be adding any more Pac twelve teams. Oh, and so oh. the Pac twelve. Will survive probably the Pac-10 now. Yeah, it Pac- seems very likely the very Oregon, likely Pac-10. It just, seems very likely everyone's going to sign a grant of rights for about five to six more years until wow. uh, the Big Ten media deal is done, until the SEC media deal is done, and then we'll go through this whole realignment fiasco again wow. five or six years from now. So I just wanted to intrude with that a little bit of breaking news. Yeah, wow. Oh, dang, that's crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah, great for the Pac-12 though. I love the Pac-12, well, and even saying, without yeah. USC and UCLA, I I want to stay. They're trash anyways. The teams, you know. <laughs> They're afraid of us. We need some better teams in here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go get Fresno. Let's <laughs> get a real football team. Truly elite. <laughs> Let's go get UAB. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go get UAB. The GOATs. Um, well, that Stanford game, like, that's a t- the take on Thomas game. Like, oh, yeah. Like, the biggest break was four touchdowns before half. Like, ridiculous. Yeah. Man, man, we're playing. He was playing against kids. That was oh, a high yeah. school team. That Stanford like, team was so bad. I went to that game. It was the most pitiful attendance and just entire production of a football game I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's funny. The stands were almost completely empty on the Stanford side. At, at the beginning of the game, there were more Utah fans than Stanford fans. And oh. they filtered in like midway through the first quarter. Oh, how Titans fall. I don't even want to talk about their halftime or pregame. It was atrocious. They had a marching <laughs> band. They did not have uniforms. They were just wearing, like, some people had jeans on, shorts, T-shirts. They had no formations. They were literally walking around the field playing. No <laughs> formations, no uniforms, nothing. But ultimately, was, that's sad, though, because uh, I feel like Pac-12 football is at its best when Stanford's good. I agree. Oh, I wish all the teams were I mean, good. do you remember our early Pac-12 days where we number three Stanford was coming to Rice Cycles? Uh, we were going to play number five Stanford at the farm. You know. Probably the most influential game outside of uh, some of these these games this year was the upset win against Stanford. Yeah. For our like third or second or third year in the, in the pack. Yeah. We came out there and we we beat them at Rice Eccles and it was it was a shock. You know. Yeah. Spoiling yeah. The, exactly. The field and so, yeah. yeah. So overall, like, I do think the Pac-12 was a little down last year. I I think that it will recover because I, I think that we've had a lot of good talent come in. 
Um, we've gotten rid of some of the kind of dead weight head coaches that weren't really that great. Except you know, one. Yeah, ex- Herm Edwards. How is he employed? <laughs> Herm Edwards. How is he employed? He is the worst coach I've ever seen in my entire life. Like a little rant. That dude, that's like, bro. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I love dunking on ASU as much oh, as the yeah. next Utah fan. But, like, that's just pitiful. Like, uh, like how is he employed? Dude, I don't I understand. Know. How? For your how AS, is the man surviving? Your ASU. Like, he has to have some a, kind of dirt. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, your ASU, you're... Well, you could get a good coach. ASU program. is a good program. Yes, you could get a good quality coach. It's like, like some of these. It's like, come on, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, speaking of speaking of coaches, a few one of them is coming up that I, I despise, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> that Arizona game was kind of scary. Like, truly, like, oh, that, that, one, were, that was another game I looked over. Like, we looked over them. That was a lucky, lucky win. Let me talk about their like offense and the plays they were running. Oh, it, it was inspiring to me. Their qu- I remember vividly their quarterback threw a fifty yard bomb. He got benched, didn't come back the rest of the drive. <laughs> he never he, he didn't step foot in the game the rest of the drive. They were like and they went and scored a touchdown. They were like rotating for like no apparent reason. Yes. And then they had two guys. We couldn't stop them, man. Sometimes their them. running back would take the snap. Sometimes their backup quarterback who looked like their running back would take the snap. It was so confusing to me, and either of them were passing it. Both of them passed it at some point. Put the running back, their second string, and their first string. I just, they were pulling everything out of the back to win that game. I couldn't and understand they it. Did. They almost did. It was two it was points. Like, the third. Two yeah. points. I feel like they even had Devin Lloyd confused. Like, I remember that game. Yeah. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> I had no idea what they were doing. But, like, let's talk about this one play. One play that University of Utah ran that. We have not stopped talking about mm. for the last year. This goal line play designed for Grant Keithy. Oh, man. the best play design. Best I've goal ever line seen. play I've ever seen. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. They have him lined up on the on the outside wide receiver. He comes in. Yeah, it's tri- it's trips on the left. The two wide receivers come up and block. He comes around behind, right at the goal line. Two seconds left. You don't have time for anything. He catches it, takes one step in, and he's there. I don't even know how you stop that. I thought like you'd have to jump that yeah. route. You'd have to jump that. When we ran it, yeah, I was like, know. "Wait, what just happened? Like, what? Like, it what was too what fast. just happened? It was, it was a one-second play, and then he was just in the end zone. I'm like, "What just happened?" Well, and that yeah, formation, like, you could do, you could run so many different yeah. plays on that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah close trips that? on the left, you could do a ton yeah. on the goal line there. But like, usually trips, it's like pretty long developing plays. You know, it's like a flood route or something yeah, like yeah. that. But like this was just like a quick hitter, and I was like shocked, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was near a shuffle pass. Like it was so fast. It's like what is going on? Didn't he start motioning before yeah. the play? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's how fast it was. It's he like started like motioning. It's like a tighter motion I, to come I, block. It. I yeah. genuinely don't know how you stop that play. It just. And, but that's the only time we've ever you, used it. Like, yeah. It's oh, weird. Why would we use it against Arizona? I know. Play? It's like uh, we should have yeah. saved. That. But here's the game, probably of the year. This mm-hmm. Oregon game was yeah. phenomenal. I remember us three. We watched it together live. Freaking and out. It was. Uh-huh. Every touchdown, we were yelling and screaming. Man. It was probably the highlight. It was crazy at this highlight game. Of, highlight of my, of my football fandom. fandom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just incredible. amazing. It rivals that 63-point Oregon game. 62-20 to 20 Oregon game. That was a lit one. That's the last time we've won at Austin, by the way. Yeah, we got to go to Austin this year. Sixty-three to twenty, boys, it's coming. (laughs) No, no, we're gonna win thirty-eight to thirteen. We score thirty-eight, they improve by field goal. That's the I believe. It's and that rivals that game for me. And I think, uh, speaking of like we talked about, coaches freaking can't stand, cannot, could not stand. (laughs) I don't even say. I can't forget to say Cristobal. Cristobal, yeah, Mario Cristobal is the. Oh, I don't know why. I have no idea why I hate this man with all my heart. <laughs> it's like he's up there with Nick Saban for me. I love I that man. He gave us some wins. Yeah. Mario Cristobal gave us a free victory. Twice. Mario Cristobal's got dinner on me anytime he's uh. in Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah. I can't I couldn't stand this guy. I don't know. He just had this, such cockiness coming in. He's like, oh, yeah, we're the third ranked in the country. Like, there's no way this this, this team barely ranked is going to come out and beat us. And he he was saw. more of a recruiter than he was. Yeah. Yeah. So just the arrogance that that he had on his face. I, I doubt he was freaking arrogant. <laughs> I, I thought he was. I never really pegged him as like that. I don't know annoying. why. I couldn't stand him. I don't know. I just I don't I don't like the guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think gone. recruiting wise, that's a strong suit. He <laughs> yeah. needs he Jeez. needs like some like perfect coordinators. Like Morgan Scally and like Ludwig would be the perfect oh, coordinators yeah. for this guy because they can handle their own parts. But like 
it just didn't seem like that guy had that board. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm then, glad he didn't. <laughs> yeah, but, but this game, honestly, like, the entire Pac-12 wanted us to lose. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted Oregon in the playoff. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, if Oregon wins this, they're almost certain yeah. in the playoff. This is really when Cam Rising brought some swagger that we have not had at Utah for yeah. years. Uh -huh. Oh, that. I, that Rising I, just brings a – he just opens another dimension to the offense. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Huntley was really good, but you couldn't rely on his arm the way you can rely on Rising's arm. I just – I never know? trusted Huntley like I did Rising. Every game, he would make at least two or three, like, wow, that was a really bad read. Yeah, or you know? that was a bonehead play. Uh -huh. you know? Like, that was a terrible play. And Rising, he's much he's much better at making the right play. For me, it's it's, it's just um, praise to him to see he's only started how many games? Nine games at this point yeah. in his career? Unbelievable. Yeah, maybe doesn't feel like nine that. Nine or ten counting his the, the first game in co the COVID season. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, Which he did three plays and got exactly. injured. Part of me really hopes selfishly he comes back for his senior year. You know, oh. I know that that's probably not on the table. The NFL is probably going to come knocking, but, mm -hmm. I mean, I would love him to come back. Same. Uh, if Rising came back. <laughs> but truthfully, I don't really care that much about the NFL. I Same. just care. I just love Utah football. Yeah. yeah and, like, this, you got the uh, Bad Moon Rising uh, pre-game hype video that Utah Athletic uh, uh -huh. partner brought out. Oh, that was the GOAT hype just, video. He, he, br he brought a sense of, you are not beating us. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. we are better than you at everything. Yeah. And, and then it looked like Kincaid brought that. Lloyd, like, yeah. developed uh -huh. that. Then Covey like, mm -hmm. developed yeah. that. Like, yeah. People just like, we are yeah. better than you, and we're going to show it. They come out number three in the country. They shouldn't have been number three. We all know that. Um, I mean, it was they had reasonable. Good wins. I mean, they beat Ohio for State for sure. Yeah, but for sure. But like, that's, it's, a, win, that's a very good win. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that's like the I, best win in the country. Looking at it time. now, looking at yeah. it now, like this team shouldn't have been. You know what, I just think well, we well, were that thing, good. Well, the thing was, was were they not that good, or did we just expose their flaws? Is the thing. That's a good. That's a good question. Because like we're like Ohio I State didn't have the style. Yeah, we just matched up well. Like our lines dominated. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It was just the yeah. team, right team, right time. For sure. I just... I do think I've Oregon last them. year was better than the perception of them after we beat them down pretty I bad. Agree. Like, they I were a they, very good team still. Yeah, like, I think they were, like, around a top 10 quality team. You know? Like, probably around there. I Anthony am. Brown had a very low finish to his Oregon career there. People forget he was actually a well above average quarterback for most of yeah. the season. Like he was, he's not a bad player at all. No, he's pretty good. Going into the Oregon game, I was actually kind of worried about him because his highlights were good. He could run, he could pass, he looked big. I don't know. I just yeah. don't think he deserves, like, oh, that dude's trash. Like anyone else, they would have won. It's like I think he was pretty good. Yeah. I just think anyone that has that much pressure from our defensive line is not going to do that. Exactly. Well. I don't agree. I think he's trash. You think he's trash? No. I don't I, I don't. I think he's a, he's a great he's a great quarterback. I just think just looking at it now. Yeah. Like, like you said, it was it's probably unwarranted like the the hate they got at the end of the year. Yeah. They just closed badly. I yes. feel like we broke. They kind of pulled the Utah of 2019. Yeah, yeah it was exactly yeah. 2019. So yeah. it's kind of it's kind of nice to get that back. Repay them. Repay yeah. Them, so the, that, the 2019 doesn't sting as much anymore. No, exactly. Uh -huh. um, so it stings a little bit, but not but as much. We're Pac-12 champions now. It's we we got that done in the full strength Pac-12. USC and UCLA is still there. Uh -huh. No one will take that away from us. Exactly. exactly. And we're about to do it again next year. Random, random side tangent. Um, speaking about really good quarterbacks coming to town, do you guys remember a couple of years ago when Jared Goff and Cal were undefeated? They came to Rice Cycles, it was game day. Do you guys remember that game? Yeah. And we, like, killed them. Uh -huh. Got through, like, three or four interceptions. Yeah. yeah. Man, that just reminded me of that game. And, like, just Rice Cycles is such a tough place to it play. Is. Like, easily the best home field advantage in the Pac-12. For sure. Surprisingly, Oregon is probably second in that home field mm -hmm. advantage. It's, just, it's like, I can't believe UCLA and USC... I know. They just don't show up. It sucks. Exactly. It sucks. They used to, though, is the thing. Yeah, but it's a sad thing. Like, their programs are they're not bad. That's but I wish them nothing now. I hope they, they have zero yeah. attendance no, every year. No one comes to their games a single exactly. time and they go 0 and 11. Yeah, I don't owe them any loyalty anymore. Oh, yeah. Before, I would have owed them loyalty, but now they're, it's 100%. out the window, man. They betrayed yeah. us. That's yeah. it. Um, and then Colorado, obviously, there's, I don't really think there's that much to talk about yeah. with this last game. Mm -hmm. Really, on like this game was just like kind of coasted through a final um, hurrah to Tyne Aaron. 
Um, those helmets oh, wow. were absolutely beautiful. And, you know, it was just, it was a fun way to end the night. You know, it was a... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It was stressful for a bit. I remember it was pretty close. Right? They had the a first kick return. And a half. Yeah. yeah. They had a freaking kick return. Well, our special was, teams, so... Bad. Like, obviously, like you see here, it's, it was senior day. So, it was... Yeah. It was it was cool and it was sad to see Lloyd, Devin Lloyd. Tafua. Tafua. Yeah. Covey, um... Cole Fotheringham, yeah. the goat, you know. He's kind of a goat. It's just, it's just hard to get hype for that Colorado team. I know they're I trying know. to make that. I know they're trying to make that kind of like a rivalry, but that's just the end of the season. Like uh-huh. we were looking ahead oh, in the Pac-12 championship. A lot of stuff's decided by that time. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, it's there's I, one time in memory where that game decided. And we lost. Itself. Yeah, we uh-huh. lost to Colorado. Nice. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh, that was so bad. That was so bad. Obviously, like. That leaves a sort of patient amount, and you want to go there, you want to have them come here, go, go there, and just absolutely mm-hmm. beat them every time, yeah. no problem. And it seems like we do that the most most part. But. Yeah, I am excited to play at Colorado because that stadium is beautiful. Oh, there's yeah. a, it's beautiful Me area. We're thinking of going out there. Yeah, yeah I just, maybe we should all make game. a road trip. Yeah, yeah it's good. Colorado's. A I want to go to like two away games this year for yeah. Utah. And going and starting off with that Pac-12 championship, you two went. We oh, were there. Yeah. We were actually Just, in a suite because ooh. we knew the person who designed the Legion Stadium. And so we were actually able to go into their suite, and man, it was incredible. Just, just before we start about the game, just talk about the atmosphere of that Utah game. All that needs to be said is it felt like a home game at Rice Eccles. You would, Everyone I was passing in the hallways of that, it's like, go Utes, go Utes, everyone is... They were really? singing songs. I mean, I saw Samson, Samson Nakua was there. I said hi to him. He was walking in the halls. I mean, I know he betrayed us, but but yeah, he's just I mean, it's hi. still cool to see him. Oh, yeah, but like, Samson, but like, honestly, it did feel like a home game. I felt like I saw more USC fans tailgating outside uh-huh. than Oregon fans. Yeah, Oregon. It kind of felt like they stuck to themselves. They knew they were outnumbered. They were kind of just on one side, yeah. and they were kind of banded together. And they didn't; they weren't like tailgating or anything. I noticed. No, they like, weren't. they weren't set up outside the city. I think that's probably just the proximity. It's just harder to get down to yeah. Las Vegas from oh, Oregon. And plus, we harder. knew we were in that game by the Oregon win. Yeah, as soon as we beat Oregon, we were there. Exactly. So the we could start, we could start buying up tickets. We basically we knew after we beat Stanford because exactly. we knew we just needed to win two out of three, and we had exactly. Arizona, yeah, Colorado. Exactly. Exactly. And so, so we were there. We got tickets. People were getting tickets um, as soon as they were ready because they knew Utah was playing there. And so it was it was a home game. And it, it was kind of indicative that they came out there and they beat them just like they did at home. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it was it was nearly a carbon copy. Um, yeah, almost exactly yeah. the same. And Even down to the late second quarter collapse by Oregon. Exactly. exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just ironic to think like two weeks – it's two weeks prior to that Pac-12 championship game, 38-7. Yeah. You know, that everyone was, was saying that Oregon's going to come out they're with that chip on their didn't, shoulder. Didn't still, like, three out of four of the ESPN guys predict exactly. Oregon was going to win? Yeah, they did, yeah. Well, it was, it's, it's just, it's Wasn't just, it four out of four the first time predicted that? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, we never get hyped from that, you know. Yeah, they're never going to choose But, yeah, a little bit more. Like, the atmosphere was just, just incredible. Everyone was just so hyped up. Everyone was so happy. They were so kind, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, man, the I feeling honestly, was just amazing. Yeah, the Oregon fans actually were super like nice. Yeah, I respect them a lot. Yeah, I respect I really them like a lot. Oregon honestly, fans. yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know? yeah, yeah, like I didn't see one like bad interaction. I guess like I didn't even see one of them. All my interactions were really great. Yeah. I, I've always really liked Oregon fans. That's ironic because like the Oregon fans in the state of Utah are kind of. Kind of annoying. Those are the bandwagon yeah, fans, yeah, though. Exactly. Those it's are like, the people that love Steph ones, Curry as well. Yeah. <laughs> like they love the Warriors and their favorite NBA team. They like Oregon. The Brady they were, fans. They were good back then when the Jazz were trash. Or yeah, exactly. it's, like, it's like they're just going to whatever team's having success. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. It's like now they're probably Utah fans. They're the kids that wore the neon orange hoodies and uh, the neon yellow. I mean, exactly. hoodies at school. You know, uh-huh. like it's stuff. just super. <laughs> it's just like that's funny. It's it's good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Um, obviously, you had some incredible. Plays from Devin Lloyd that game. You had some oh, yeah. incredible um, performances from the offensive end, defensive end. A great game. Yeah. And then speaking of one insane, incredible game. This is the best game in my lifetime. I know we lost, but this is the best game I've ever seen in my life. Me, me and Landon actually oh, went to this one as well. This was crazy. This was unbelievable. The, the Rose Bowl, I had never been there before. Mm-hmm. The scenery, just 360 degree panorama basically oh, you know man. like everywhere it looks awesome the mountains are great you know the temperature's obviously awesome you know when it we gets when the sun sets oh, over the mountain it, was, it just looks so it good. was literal 
perfect conditions. It wasn't too hot. There was no wind, sunny. It was oh amazing. My gosh. And, and we the put stadium. on a hell of a show. And again, good performance. Home game. <laughs> That the was not as much as the Pac-12. Yeah, Ohio State travels well. They travel well, they travel they travel well, well but still, but like it was. There was a strong contingent of Ohio State. We, we, we still we were actually on the Ohio State side, so yeah, we, were, we were on a lot of. We uh, were with a lot of Ohio State fans, and how again, was like I felt like Ohio State fans were pretty good. Yeah, they general. were good too. I, think I feel the like blood. there was one that was like pretty bad. He was a little kid. I don't. He was annoying. I think it was an annoying Utah and Ohio State's always been respectable. You know, uh, the Urban Meyer connection. You know, obviously right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's I kind of like, like let's talk, not talk about yeah, him. Let's but back in the day, back in the day, Urban Meyer, ex and coach. You know, it was. Uh-huh. You know, there's always been that connection. I've always liked Ohio State. They were always yeah. my favorite Big Ten team. They're always really good. I always enjoyed watching them play. Yeah, they're my favorite Big Ten. Yeah, they're team my now, favorite sure. too. Because like, I don't have any ill feelings towards them exactly. at all. I, I respect the program they built and CJ Stroud. That man oh, was the best quarterback I've ever seen. Stroud's ability is unreal. I mean, about, easily about is past. the best player. You guys were able to see. Oh, I mean, which like, one? Oh like, there's, there's, there's like seven. <laughs> right there. You know, oh, yeah. it was the one that was just, Oh, yeah, puts it right in the bread basket, right over Clark were, Phillips to uh, JSN, Jackson Smith, oh, and Jake I, Yeah, I still remember. I think it was Ohio State's second drive. Makai Bernard was guarding JSN. And the pass was so smooth, so in stride, he didn't even think it was a completion. Yeah, like Bernard, he actually like went like this. It's like no, he literally just caught it on his last step right here. Like, like he didn't even had a dead did, didn't break stride. Like, <laughs> it's incredible. He's, it went he's... right through his upraised arms, like right in between Bernard. Like the best coverage you could play, and it was just in stride. Obviously, I'm biased, but Cam Rising is outside of him. Like there's only two quarterbacks that are out of take. CJ Stroud's the number one on that list. Uh-huh. Yeah. CJ yeah. Stroud, gosh, I. If he's not a future NFL great, I don't know who would who would be. I know. Yeah, he's, like he is, how could you? This is Trevor Lawrence. That, you know. Yeah, it's, it looks exactly yeah. like Trevor Lawrence. Like, like, his his power, his throw motion is so clean. Like it feels like he's not so even trying. Fast. The, ball just the sits tightest out there. spiral. Yeah, Stroud has the Heisman on lock this year. I, I agree. Him. Certainly, he wins that that the offense was unbelievable. I don't think I've ever. I don't think we've ever played against a better offense ever. No, we haven't. Hey. Yeah. And we and we lost by three. Yeah. This shows how good uh-huh. that team was that year. Yeah, who knows? It might have been different if we'd rising. We could have scored on that drive. Barnes didn't score. Yeah, if we had some more secondary you know, depth. Yeah, exactly. If Bernard wasn't playing both ends of the field. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what happened if they had their whole team? Like, who knows what happened? You know? Who knows? But how can you score more every drive? Exactly. Kind of, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they you scored every drive except the first. You one. can't score more other than, than turnovers. Yeah. Exactly. Um, let's do. Let's talk about um our like highlight key plays of the year. We yeah. all picked one. Um, we kind of talked about some of them here. We talked about yeah, the Arizona goal line I'll, play. I'll we go first about, because mine is the earliest in the year. Yeah. We talked about some USC plays, but we really want to highlight three plays that we all picked, and we're going to have Tanner go first. So, so they both this. chose plays in the Oregon game. Mm-hmm. I chose a play in the ASU game, which I've already said on this podcast that that was the one that was really the momentum swinger for me. And so here, here is this play. Uh, yeah, just let's just watch, watch it. Let's just watch it. I love this. Boom. <laughs> and here you get the Covey I, flex. I know I know this play seems pretty innocuous to pick. You know, it's a third and five. Like, it's not the end of the world. But I think this play represents so much more than that. You know, it represents that even though we were down 14 and a half, you know, we'd lost a teammate a couple weeks earlier. Like, we didn't give up. We had that fight in us, you know, and like a passion to win. And like, how like confident do you have to be to flex when you're down a touchdown? Oh, yeah. Half? Down the touchdown at home, and he's flexing on this dude. Mm-hmm. And this you know, is Britain Covey. This is yeah, he's five eight. <laughs> it's of all people, this is Britain Covey, the most humble player person that I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so personally, I think this was the defining play of the season. I think this is. I think this swung us into full contention. You know, this swung us, and this gave us our swagger. This kind of defined to me. What Utah was the second half of the season. Exactly, and this is it was this was a, one of the plays I was going to pick. You know, I it was between this and the one I did pick, and you know, it's just indicative of how amazing. I can't say, I don't believe I'm saying that was wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, it is just a awesome thing to see. Fifth year starter, <laughs> absolutely love it. Was on the team when I was 15 years old, <laughs> coming out here. 
the old man of the team flexing on these youngins and saying like, bro, uh, like we do not give a crap who you are. Yeah. We don't care if we're down by by twenty one. We're showing up and we're winning this game. Mm-hmm. And this, I think, this is like the swagger that Cam Rising brought. Yeah. You know, he has that. It's the way he talks, the way he holds himself. It just like bled on everyone, everybody on the field. Mm-hmm. And yeah. to have Britton Covey, like I said, <laughs> the go super humble man to come do this. It's just I mean, this guy looks like your seminary teacher. Exactly. He's flexing on you after tearing your defense up. Okay, yep, love that play. We'll move on to my favorite play. This was in the Oregon versus Utah game. And this play just, it really signified the mindset change. So I'll just let it roll, then we'll talk about it. Oh, just man. incredible. Get him down. I love this play. Question. If that was anyone else, would you pick it if it wasn't Brent Keithy? I don't know. No, hey, hey, he's a Keithy lover. It wouldn't have happened with anyone else. He's the only one that can do something like this. It's, it's a good point. No one else can do this. It's just, man, what a what an incredible player too. Mm-hmm. I, player. I love this play so much because it just showed like, we're here, we're ready to outwork you, just out physical Oregon. And that's how we won. We out physical them. They just weren't ready for the intensity, honestly. Yep. And it's and so this, fun. This play just. Oregon was, they were on their back foot, and we were just punching them in the mouth with this. Like, we're not going to stop. We're yeah, putting see, this game away. This swung the game, too. We're, look look at the time left. There's a minute and 40 left on the clock. We're not even past midfield. Like, there's a chance we don't score on this, and it's 14 nothing, and it's uh-huh. a whole different ball game. Exactly. But this, this changes that. This gets us close into scoring range, and we score, and then obviously... We what comes up next is yeah. my uh-huh. favorite, my play. The now we'll go season. to maybe the fan consensus favorite you know, play like, of the season. You know, earlier. like obviously we, this was the obvious pick. You know, we all oh, knew yeah. this was the pick that everybody was like, if you think what play defined the season for University of Utah, it's this play, you know, um, it's Britton mm-hmm. Covey's incredible return in the Oregon, Oregon game at Catching the ball on the 22-yard oh, line. Poetic. Just, it's poetic justice that uh-huh. this happened. And to me, like, why do you kick to this man? Yeah, why would why would you punt this punt right here? It makes zero sense. Why are you kicking this? Um, I, I guess this makes 22-yard line. I guess just, the decision to punt to Britton Covey, maybe it should change my my thought process on <laughs> I do. I might like my own. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so a much. camera right here. It's shaking it's, from how loud it is yeah, in there. Like people look at that. up and down. That's just oh it's, my look! I mean, it's a completely packed, packed. sold out rice equity. So from a a minute forty from the Landon's pick for Dalton, mm-hmm. not Dalton, uh, Grant Keithy. Grant Keithy's um, play to this twenty zero from fourteen zero to twenty zero in less than a minute and less than two less minutes. Than two yeah. minutes. Incredible play! Mm-hmm. What an incredible view! You know, what uh-huh. a, like a still picture of one of the best Utah players of all time. Exactly. Um, and Britton Covey. Man will be missed. He'll have yeah, it's going to be a different team without him, man. Uh-huh. It seems like forever since we've had a game without him on the it's team. Weird. It's going to mm-hmm. be a weird vibe, for sure. Mm-hmm. Hope he has a great career out in Philadelphia yeah. and wherever yeah. he ends up. I'm sure that he will. Yeah. He's a special player. So, so overall, I hope you guys enjoyed kind of that recap of the 2021 season. You know, we just we love talking about that. We love sharing our favorite plays. Um. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can have an even better season in this 2022. And so we're going to jump right into it, the most important games of 2022. So just to start off, I think that this 2022 schedule is very, very difficult. I think this is one of the hardest schedules that we've had in the Pac-12. Because if you think about it, we're playing at Florida, we're playing at UCLA, we get USC to come to our house, and we have to play at Oregon. Ooh. The other two people that were picked in the Pac-12 media poll, USC and Oregon, they don't play each other. We're the only team that's to play them both. Mm-hmm. And we start out at an SEC team in the swamp, in Gainesville. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. It's going to be loud. Mm-hmm. I can start us off here. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I'll just start off a pretty easy pick. I think Florida. It, this will decide our season. Yeah, go, we go out the there, tone setter. If we go out there, win by a good margin, really kind of show up like, hey, like, you ain't touching us in the swamp. Yeah. Where you Who else is going to beat us? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No matter where we play, if we go out there and beat this team out at home in the swamp, like, who else can beat us? Uh-huh. And I think that kind of signifies our, our season. Obviously, 
there's a lot of a lot of games that you could pick, but I think Florida start off the season hot. Yeah, it's a big one, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I think those are some great points because we really can't lose to Florida and be the team we think we are. Yeah, you know, like if we are the team we think we are, we're not going to lose to Florida. And if we do lose to Florida, we maybe aren't the team. Exactly, because Florida didn't have a great season last year. They really didn't, and it's they probably will be improved, but they're installing new coaching staff. There's just a lot of question marks around Florida, and if we're the established powerhouse that we think we are, we need to win this game. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to lose it. Exactly. This is probably the best time to get Florida. Oh yeah. First game of the season. First game with a new head coach. I, I say in the next three years, three four years, Florida is going to be coming back to be pretty dang good. Yeah, if they're um, coming to our house next year. Yeah, that's going to be a game. We're, we gotta go to that. Yeah, one. we're definitely oh, yeah. have to go. Um, but I think, like I said previously, this is a tone setter. Mm -hmm. so what do you think, Landon? What's our what's the big My game this year? Most important. I'm going with USC at home because USC is an interesting one. They could either be really good this year or slightly improve. I don't imagine they're going to be worse. Than last year, that would be surprising to me. And yeah, I worse think, than four and eight, I don't see that. Yeah, that yeah. would be very shocking to me. And USC a is a team that they have a pretty easy schedule before this. They're probably going to be decently high ranked, and they're going to they have Lincoln Riley as their head coach. Their USC, they're going to have yeah. tons of hype. So they might even be ranked a few spots higher than they should be. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we were the lower ranked team in this game, even if we were undefeated. I feel like it's possible. To it's that. possible because if, if USC comes in with one loss or undefeated. Yeah, I mean, it's USC. Exactly. Like, the national They're media gonna loves that. LA Lincoln, Riley, oh my god! I mean, it's like Texas is ranked in the top 20 every they're, year to start. And they never have these good. years. Yeah. They're, like, actually trash half these years. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's a great pick. I mean, yeah. that is going to be... I think that environment is going to be the best dry mm -hmm. cycles that has ever been. Because they're going to they're gonna let them hear it. They're going to let it. Because they're leaving the Pac-12. This is the last time USC comes to Rice Eccles. You know... Mm -hmm. We are not in the oh, yeah. loss. We're you know, coming out hot for this. I think so that's my pick for most important game of I this season. I think this USC team is very similar to the Oklahoma team of last year. And I think we are better than that team. So I think we uh, I expect to win here. Um, and I think USC will come out and they'll try to stomp on us. And we'll just say, no, son. <laughs> yeah. And a good game. I'm, I'm going to pick the I'm going to pick the Oregon game. Because mm -hmm. it's on the road, it's late in the season. If we're the team we think we are, we're going to be undefeated or we're going to have one or two losses. And so this very well will probably be to clinch a spot in the Pac-12 title game. Mm -hmm. You know, on the road, at Oregon, against we a team that's going to be motivated. This point. Well, it's possible. But since there's since it's both divisions now, that's true. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot more difficult to clinch early. Mm -hmm. It's going to go down to the wire. And so I think that this might be a game where it's a potential clincher for a Pac-12 championship berth. Um, and I, I I think this is crazy. I mean, Autzen Stadium is going to be riled up. We oh, just yeah. destroyed them, seventy-six to seventeen over two games last year. Whew. You know, like they're not going to like that. The new coach is going to want to come in and set a tone. And, I mean, I think everyone believes Oregon's going to be good next year. They've got a lot of good yeah. pieces. You know, maybe they're not going to be, like, a college football playoff contender, but I think that they'll be good. Like, I think they're mm -hmm. going to be a good team. I agree. Um, and so this one, to me, because this one will make or break kind of our ambitions, you know. Um, this, If we lose this game, it's going to be more difficult to make a New Year's Six game. You know, it's going to be more difficult to win the Pac-12 title. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just going to be a little bit more stressful. If we win this... Everything is still open to us. That's Everything's true. on the table. Yeah, I get what you're saying completely with that. Like, if we have a loss, we don't want it to be the Oregon game. Yeah. You know? It would be much better to lose to someone earlier in the year and then win this, get our Pac-12 title spot, New Year's Six Bowl, stuff like that. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that those three games are the pick, the picks to watch. The games yeah, to watch this Florida, year. USC, and Oregon. If you're not if you're not watching any other of the Utah games, watch those three. Those are yeah. The if I had to choose three regular season games to watch, it's Florida, USC, and Oregon. Yep. Exactly. Those are my picks. And so, um, pay attention to those guys, those video, those games right there, and that will signify where we're at. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's head into our Let's X Factor see. players this year. Yeah, so we're going to choose, each of us are going to choose an X Factor on defense and offense. 
And um, I put a little qualification on it. I said, you can't choose Cam Rising and you can't choose Clark Phillips. Mm-hmm. Because I think those are probably the two... I Low mean, hanging the, fruit. Yeah, those are probably the consensus answers. Yeah. Obviously, our season hinges on Cam Rising. Obviously, our season hinges on Clark Phillips. And so mm-hmm. we're going to try to look for maybe more down-in-the-weeds type players that yeah. are our next factors. Do you want to start us off, T, on defense? Uh, let's have Landon start us on. You guys want to go defense first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this one... a little bit more of a conversation. This one came to me pretty easily. I think it's Lander Barton. From what I saw in the spring game, he has all the physical tools to be one of the great Utah linebackers. But game time is a lot different than the spring game. How is he going to perform when he's playing another real college team? Right. When he has to think about all the schemes, his study, his film. Like, how is he going to do in that situation? You because know, the what, mental aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Because what I saw, he's a beast. He was dominating out there. He stripped Tavion at the goal line. Like, he has that ball hawk just physicality that Devin Lloyd had. Like, when he's hitting players, they're staying down. Like, they're not breaking his tackles. And so if he has a big season, I think he could do amazing things for our defense. Because having a linebacker like Devin Lloyd just showed me how important that is. There were so many plays that Devin Lloyd just single-handedly blew up by himself. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the room with him, uh, Diabate, and Reed falls out. I think those are clearly the top three guys, just from everything Mm -hmm. we've heard. It'll be interesting to see who plays yeah. in what scenarios and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so for me, my X Factor on defense is going to be Van Fillinger. Ooh. I think that he, I mean, we have to get more push than we did last year on the D-line. I and I think he is the start of that. If he can get downhill and he can get the quarterback and he can contain the edge on the run, uh-huh. I think our defense will look much improved. Because if you remember Oregon State, we couldn't hold the edge. We couldn't get any push downfield, and they dominated mm-hmm. us that way. Yeah. That's usually what we do to teams. Exactly. And so my, my pick for X-Factor is Van Fillinger. I think he's going to blow up. I yeah. think he is going to – I think as he goes, so does the Utah defense. That's a super smart pick because he was kind of peaking into the end of last season. The beginning, yeah. I remember being like, he's not very good. He got some penalties. He was kind of getting pushed around. He gained like – 20 pounds throughout the season of just muscle. And yeah, he's still and more bigger. in the offseason, too. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I would not be surprised at all if he leads the team in sacks. Not surprised at all. Um, it really kind of came down to two people for me. Um, and I'm going to go with a little bit more of a obvious one. I'm going to go with Cole Bishop. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cole Bishop, yeah. Um, if for those of you, I doubt any of you do, but maybe some of you follow the University of Utah athletics on tiktok <laughs> okay recently they had a video um that was featured on college game day um, of the university to hot takes and they're talking about anything from food to see like their zaxby's better than raising canes or <laughs> mountains are better than James the, <laughs> the mountains are better than the ocean type of thing but i don't i couldn't really catch who it was somebody said cole bishop for Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Ooh. Yeah, and now ever since I've heard that, it's been in my mind, you know. He has all the tools. He ha- he plays a position. So disruptive. Yeah, he's a big athletic safety or defensive back, whatever they put him at. He, he, he is, um, he plays the, the right position. Um, and I would love to see that happen. Um, obviously, I think the favorite coming from the University of Utah is going to be Clark Phillips. Oh, yeah, yeah for um, sure. Phillips. But Cole Bishop is a sleeper. Um, he is a watch list for the Jim Thorpe Award. Yeah. Um, so I could really see him coming out there and shining this year. Um, oh, he came totally out of agree. nowhere at the end of the season. Yeah. He was really a big um, – he's kind of like had a game – like a four-game stretch where he was dominant. He was yeah. absolutely so good. Dominant. He brings energy too. He hits big. Exactly. So I, that's probably my yeah. answer on defense. I, I would love to see him take that next step and maybe – take that step that Clark did last year. Yeah. For him. Yeah, one more thing on that. It's something I said last time was I feel like a Utah weakness last year was creating turnovers. And yeah, I feel like didn't Cole, many. we didn't create nearly as many as I'm used to. I'm used to having a more disruptive defense. And I feel like Cole Bishop is a big part of getting back to that level. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's the type of guy that you can trust to make those big plays. You know, I mean, how many, he's already blocked, like, what, two kicks? Yeah. You know, I mean, he's gotten tons of big hits. You I think know? he's already recovered a fumble to, like, strip someone. Or no, well, yeah, Rose Bowl fumble. Yeah. Clark Phillips uh-huh. peanut punched it yeah. out, and he got it. And, yeah, so, like, I... But just to be there on that, so just to, yeah. be, there, just to be there on that play, it shows, like, his awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, because uh, that was, 
that looked like a it looked like a runaway oh, touchdown. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, Clark, so yeah, Clark was the highlight. Of oh coming yeah, in the punch. Him, so so I yeah, be there. I I impressive. think Cole will be. I agree with you, Ethan. I think Cole will be really important. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on over to the offensive side. Landon, yeah, I'll, our I'll start with the offensive side. You ruled out Ryzen, which is the easiest X factor, but I'm going to go our second best offensive player, Frank Keithy himself. <laughs> I, there's so much to be excited about with this man returning. He was he was already the GOAT tight end. He might become the GOAT wide receiver now. We never know, actually. Yeah. I, could, I can see him having a bigger role this year, even. I think he already was our most targeted player. But, I mean, you could always target him even more. He has incredible hands. He's been working with the receivers on route running, more downfield stuff. Yep. He is going to be so hard for other teams to guard. And we matchup were, nightmare. We were talking about this with we were talking about the Florida matchup earlier. I don't want to get too much into that because we'll do we'll do more different podcasts, podcasts on, on that. that. But they have a pretty good secondary, like in terms of corners and safeties. But their linebackers aren't great. Who's going to guard Frank Keith? Their corners are too small, and their linebackers aren't good enough pass protection. He could have an enormous game. He just adds a level to our offense that gets us closer to that top-tier, unstoppable offensive level. So mm-hmm. that's my X factor. Totally agree with you there. I, I'm going to go a little bit of a cop-out. I'm going to go the offensive line as a Ooh. group. Or is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> Second time in a row the defense was taken before you could choose it. It's yeah. not good. It's like, I have other people. Better find someone else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um I'm going to go the offensive line because, as we saw last year, I think that was the biggest key in our one and two start. Is we yeah. just had the wrong five out there. Exactly. And so, you know, we lose two of our best players, in Ole Sini and our leader Nick Ford, who was incredibly versatile. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I'm nervous about the offensive line. I think that there's a good, there's a good core there, but they just need to put it together correctly. Uh-huh. Because if we can't get push on the run, if we can't pass pro. Then we're not going to be very good. The trend you have to be starts. Good. Yeah, if if we're not good on the line, our season will not be as special as we think it can be. Uh huh. It's it, it's very important, especially for Florida, to have the offensive line be as good as they were or better last year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. I think I'm just going to go off someone that I saw in screen name that I really liked. I think Mikai Cope. Um, yeah. our wide receiver room. Sleeper pick. Yeah. Our wide receiver room is pretty weak. Um, relative to other positions, yeah, yeah. it's all right. To it's, to have a position that is weak, a wide receiver room is definitely probably the one you want the most. You know, it's not. It's important, mm-hmm. but it's not. I'd say running back room probably. Having a but yeah, for, as a University of Utah, we never really had a great or a great wide receiver room. We we've always had that that tier one guy though. And we just don't have that this year. Yeah. I feel like we've always had that yeah. one guy that was really good, and then everyone else was just average. And I feel like this year, we have two guys that are good, but no one that's like... We need someone to break out. It's well, like, you know, I love Vele, but it's like, he needs to be another level to be a receiver yeah, he needs one. to take a big you, step up so from, from last year. Yeah, so Makai Cope, um, for those of you that may not know, he had an incredible, I mean, amazing catch in the spring game, one-handed, in the rain. From a, it was great. From a great. From a good passing cam. Um, and it was back to back um, targets to yeah, guy. No. so it was kind of yeah. interesting to see that. Hey, like Cam may like him. Exactly. So you see the connection with Devon Vele last year. Um, came out really came out of nowhere to be um, great. They came up together. Him and Devon Vele, Cam and Devon Vele came up together on the practice squad, and mm-hmm. and you know, so it's it's. I would love to see Makai Cope. A um, he looks. Has, he has the tools to be good, and yeah. i love to see him take that next step. And so that really leads us into our next discussion, which is fall camp is starting today. Uh, I just wanted to talk about a couple of the positions um, that, you know, are probably going to have the best battles. You know, QB is obviously settled. Mm-hmm. You know, cornerback for the most part is settled with Card Phillips returning. Yeah. Uh, but one of, those, one of those groups is the receivers. And so like I was saying mm-hmm. earlier, like we really need – we really need a true number one, and we really need a co- like two to three solid guys – that are above average to have a really elite passing attack. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we have our tight ends, which are, you know, the best in the country or top two One with Georgia's two. room. You know, Georgia has great tight ends, too. Like they just they get the respect more because they won the national championship. Yeah, and so obviously we have that. But, like, we need a deep threat. We need someone that can create separation. You know, because tight ends are really great for 
finding holes in the defense, yeah. you know, like you're like not downfield. Yeah. You're not uh, running Kuthi. You're not running a Kincaid on a streak. You know, hey, I mean, I might, but usually you don't. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> hey, I, I think Keithy could get it done, but that also shouldn't be our and first And so it's choice. like, if we can, if we just need one of those deep threats to emerge. And yeah, Baylor had some pretty good deep catches. We just need more of that. Yeah. We didn't have enough. And the two choices for that, at least as of right now, Money Parks and Jalen Dixon. Obviously, yeah. speed guys. D- Jalen Dixon, one of the fastest players in the one of the fastest people in the world. Truly. Yeah. He's very fast. Um, he, I wish he played more. I think he didn't play that much. Last I think year. he had some little bit of injury concern. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think uh, a thing that I'm worried about that you kind of alluded to was um, a punt return. Yeah. Exactly. Or kick return. Yeah. Special teams return. Um, and I think that kind of goes in with the wide receiver room in a sense. Right. And, or a cornerback. Because at the end of the day, that's where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited to kind of see where that ends up. Mm-hmm. The website we were, we were looking at, they had Clark Phillips being a kick returner. Yeah, Clark Phillips was a super good <laughs> kick returner in high school. Bro, I believe in him, honestly. But I, would love I, him I do don't it, think but it will be there because I just don't think he's going to. It's not worth the risk. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, like it's no gain for him. He's not going to be returning in the yeah, NFL. No, exactly. It's so like there's no re- He doesn't need to show that tape. Yeah. I'm sure he can do an incredible Oh, job I, yeah, he'd be great. Run. I'm sure. But it's just he's not going to be the return. Why? I feel exactly. confident in saying that Jalen Dixon will be yeah, the return. And Jalen Dixon's my choice as well. That's who I would want to return. I he agree. seems like the natural successor to Covey. I feel like Covey's taught him a lot. <laughs> yeah. He even ran some sweeps Covey usually ran last year. He did He did well on him. He did good, yeah. He's a he good got, player. I think in the so. Oregon game, he had like a 20-yard one. It was really great. Juke someone out. Yeah. So, so I like I like Jalen Dixon. Something that, um, that I heard about today, I think Tanner was bringing it up earlier today um, with the fall camp. It was either Kincaid or Keefe. He brought up, um, we were just talking to him about th- this team in the Pac-12 championship of last year. And he said, like, this is not this team's championship. You know, it's last year's championship. Yeah, it, it, it was it was Kuthi on the radio with uh, Bill Riley. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had a really great great quote that I thought was awesome. Um, he yeah, just exactly what Ethan said. Talked about how can't live in the past. You know, that championship is the 2021 team's championship. That is not this team's championship. You know, they have to earn that again this year. They're not going to get it for free. Uh, the teams in the Pac-12 are not going to roll over and let them have it. Oh, yeah. You know, who cares that they were pr- predicted by the yeah, media to do matter. it? We were predicted in I mean, 2019 to win it, too. We, we beat whatever teams predicted by the media all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And so the, we can't we can't rest on our laurels, per se. You know, we mm-hmm. have to we have to keep that intensity up. And another thing he was talking about on that Bill Riley show was um, him going at him and Clark during those uh, those practices. Obviously, him, Clark, and Cam. Yeah. Um, Iron Sharp King and Iron. King K, not King K. Keith, he's arguably the most gifted tight end in the country. Carl mm-hmm. Phillips is one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the country. Yeah. You've got so three. many. Yeah. you got so much talent there. And then Cam Rising, obviously, being who he is. Incredible. Um, they were talking about how they go at each other. And it's super cool yeah. to think. And I love I, I would love to see more of that, like, at, fall, at the fall camps. Mm-hmm. Having... Uh, Clark Phillips go <coughs> Keithy yeah. having uh, Cam Rising attack Clark Phillips and vice versa mm-hmm. um, yeah. and see who comes out on top they, yeah. they're saying that um, sometimes they get each other sometimes Keithy gets Clark sometimes Clark gets Keithy sometimes Cam gets Clark yeah. vice versa mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, what they were saying was iron versus iron iron, iron sharpens, sharpens iron. iron iron sharpens iron there you go and it's pretty dang cool. I just, I just imagine if Clark Phillips is stopping completions from rising to Keithy, he's going to terrorize other teams. <laughs> and vice versa, if Rising's completing it on Clark Phillips, I mean, like, that's the toughest what competition. What are lesser to corners? Face. How they stand no chance. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, I just you, love that. Just I love at, that competitive nature of our team, that drive to win. Just look at uh, Clark Phillips, his, some of his. Um, performances against Ohio State. I didn't even call them like accolades. Picking CJ Stroud, oh. the punch out on Jackson Smith. Like. Yeah, some great, some great pass breakups. And yeah, he got got a couple of times. I mean, Jackson Smith, the jig was that good. Yeah. CJ Stroud's that good. That happens. But you know? yeah, no it corners ever you covered hundred percent. You, you know, if Keithy and Rising are getting Clark Phillips, who was beating CJ Stroud and Jackson Sometimes. Smith and Sigma. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. What what does that show for those two? 
I think wide receiver room is actually just going back to that real quick. I was just thinking, where does uh, Keithy lie there? Because obviously he's, I think he's, he's a gonna, as a tight end. He's, he's going to line up in the slot a lot. I don't uh, think he'll have hand in the dirt a lot, but I think he's he's going to be close to the line. He's I not going to be out. Uh, I don't maybe maybe occasionally, but I don't think very often. Like, like is he going to be part of our wide receiver room? Because I think he's he's a tweener. He's part of both. Yeah. It's so interesting to me because like. Having Keithy is a if we if we talk about wide receiver room, Keithy is in the wide receiver room like officially. Suddenly, the wide receiver room is a whole look. lot better. <laughs> we do have a number one. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. but that is just neither here nor right there. It's just kind of fun <laughs> to think about. Yeah, we have to see how something like that plays out. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe he's a full fledged wide receiver this year. We don't know. Yeah, and so <coughs> yeah, so just kind of wrapping up fall camp. Um, we're exactly one month out from the Florida game. You know, this is. Ooh. This is make or break time, you know. Like it's weird to say that about fall camp, but yeah. this is the this is how you define your season. This is how you how you um, install your offense in fall camp. How you run it, how you fine tune it, mm -hmm. um, and how you really perform. Because we need to have everything sorted. We can't have a disaster start like last year, where we don't have guys playing in the right position. We need them in the mm -hmm. right position starting day hey. one at Florida. Here's one thing in fall camp. This is the one item that no matter what happens, this has to be fixed in fall camp. It's the gosh dang special teams. Yes. If we come out with that formation for punting one more time, I'm going to start turning the TV off whenever we whenever I, we punt. You just can't watch. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's disastrous. It's either it, blocked or an inch away from yes, being blocked. Yes, it was blocked or like one hair away from being blocked. It, just, we, it, would, be be it would be better just to go for it. We got Honestly. lucky. We got lucky. Our offense became so good as they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With with the limiting the amount of times you have to punt. We had punt. to punt more than once or twice a game. We're not winning these games. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, it's seven free points. <laughs> I mean, we, we we might as well just take a safety instead I, of punting. Honestly, just points. do like a well, QB sneak. Still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but then they can't block it on that one. No. <laughs> Somehow they'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I genuinely feel like on that Ohio State punt deep in our end zone, we should have just taken a safety or just gone for it. I agree. <laughs> what well, like we just gave him a free touchdown. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. won that. We could have won that game. Uh, yeah, but we're gonna finish off this pod with a quick little recruitment uh, spotlight, like a little go through these players that are coming into the uh, twenty twenty two season. People that just just got here um, for the fall camp. And some people that have been here since the summer or since spring. Yeah, we've had some of these guys that are early enrollment. Yeah. And so and so I'm excited to kind of talk about them and get to know their names a little bit better. Some of them have transferred, so they're not really going to – we're not going to really bring those guys up. Um, we might share a few like, oh, he's a higher-level recruit. This is why I'm talking about him. He's transferred. Mm -hmm. so yeah. So, I mean, obviously, as you can see on the screen, the crown jewel of the class is Landon Barton. And nearly a point nine six. I mean, homegrown kid, you know, one of the best linebackers in the country. Like, he had every significant program coming after him. This dude, I mean, obviously, we know, you know, the Bartons are Utah royalty. Uh -huh. you know, plenty of Bartons in the system. Plenty of Bartons in the NFL. And this kid is going to be the best of them all. And so uh -huh. he, he's the crown jewel of this class, and I think he'll play early and often, and he'll play great. Completely agree with you there. I just think that he's going to be a massive impact player, like his brothers were, you know? Yeah. It's such high hopes for him. So I, I want to, like, talk about Nate Johnson here. Yeah. Um, Amazing. He has a lot of – I haven't really watched a lot of from him. He gives me the vibe of a Tyler Huntley, you know, an yeah. athletic – um, he's faster. Yeah, though. he has oh, crazy of course, speed. Of this dude has crazy. This speed. dude is one of the fastest people in the entire country. California state champion sprinter. And that's Nate California. Johnson. That's yeah. not like winning in Idaho or something. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's California. Like, this this guy's the real deal. I think I think his throwing has to come along, but from a pure athletic standpoint, this guy is top tier. You and know? it's it's gonna be obviously this year. He's not gonna play a huge role. He's probably gonna play a lot. He'll be scout team. A lot of yeah. scout team. He'll 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 learn a lot. Um, um, next year's where he'll be he'll, ready when it's time. Next year's really where like this is when he comes in. It's gonna be an open competition. So I'm so excited Bryson to see. Bryson and Nate Johnson. I bet one of those three will transfer out, and it'll be a battle between two. Though I agree. Um, I think whoever loses the battle between Jaquindon and Bryson is probably gonna transfer. transfer this year. Landon, why don't you talk about your thick <laughs> why lad? the why the barn goat or? You want Jalen Glover? 
Yes, sir. Absolutely love this man. He looks like Ty Jordan reincarnated in some ways. They both, I think Ty Jordan was 5'8", or was he 5'7", too? Not sure. He's pretty short. Ty was Around very that, but short. Good build for a running back. Just a build like this. He's pure muscle. He's got the speed. He has the vision. Good hands. I've seen some highlights catching of his. Super high hopes for him because I think I think he could supplant Tavion as the number one back. If I'm being completely honest with you, like Tavion does not have that on lock to be the number one running back this year, in my opinion at least, because Jalen Glover has real talent. Like this kid is going to be good. Yep, I agree. He's one of the people I'm most excited for. Um, I think he'll get snaps right away. I don't think he's going to be the featured RB to start, but I mean I wouldn't be shocked if by the end of the year we're talking as Jalen Glover RB one. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, and coming from, coming from Florida, um, it'll be just a nice uh, return home for yeah. him. Yeah, game exactly. home homecoming a little bit, right? You know, so it'll be exciting to see what he can do. Um, it'll be just that humidity down there that a lot of these people, a lot of players might not experience. A lot of them have. Mm-hmm. Some of them have not. Yeah. And so um, it's going to be cool to kind of see what he can do this year. Um, yeah. And I just think one more person, or maybe I have one or two more people want to h- highlight, but. Justin Medlock, mm-hmm. um, obviously right now our linebacker room is uh-huh. white, um, loaded but really stacked. green though. Exactly, yeah. um, it has a lot of potential. I think Justin Medlock is is right up there with um, the best of them. He yep. looked absolutely incredible in the spring game. Him and Lander Barton really showed out and showed that they are here to stay and here to play. And I'm excited to see what this man can do in the future. Yeah, I don't think he'll get a ton of time to start, but I do think. A year down the road, he's going to be a real factor in that linebacker. Uh-huh. Um, I think he's someone that kind of came out of the scene late. He was a little underrated, I feel like, by 247. And the early returns that we've seen from him have been massive. He's been pushing with the best of them. So I don't think his role will be huge this year, but I do think he will have some role, which is an, interesting for true. He has an interesting build. You know, he's 6'1, it's a good height, but like. He's, he's a big boy. He he's know? quick and he's fast and he's, he's strong and he's big and he's smart. He has all the tools to be a, a really great player. You know, this is around what Devin Lloyd came in. Probably a little higher than Devin Lloyd came in as a recruit. Yeah, for sure. Um, but he has Devin Lloyd type of potential, I believe. Um, I think one more person that we I want to talk about is uh, this man right here, Teo Johnson. Um just watching this guy run is insane. Yeah, he's fast. One of the oh. fastest people I've seen. Um, I think he, uh, we've been talking about kind of like a return man. Um, I think he's a kind of a underrated, not maybe underrated, dark horse type of person. That could. He seems a little tall for returning. Usually returners are pretty he's, short. He's fast. You'll have to, you'll see. He's, uh, yeah, yeah um, I haven't really looked at Teo Johnson very much. Is he going to play offense or defense? Uh, they're finding his best position. He's just such an athlete that I've heard rumblings he'll be on offense. Yeah, 6'2", 180, looks like a receiver to me. Yeah, that's, that's what I've heard, too. Looks like I've, a receiver to me with that speed. I've heard he's been working with the receivers. That's kind of what I've seen from just different things that I've listened to. But I, I'm not sure how much he'll contribute as a freshman, but he could make me look silly. He could make that prediction look silly. He could blow it out yeah. of the water. Yeah, but I do think I do think he is going to be a huge factor down the line. He's going to be a player. I just feel like just his his top out speed is is with the best of them. Yeah. Um, and he has some incredible um, football talent. Yeah. Just yeah. all around, you know, like he can play offense, defense if we need him. I'm just excited to see what he, this man can grow to. Yeah, he's yeah. he's for sure someone who can move all around. As you see, we had a very Quite an incredible, um, yeah, recruiting great class. recruiting class. Really, really, really strong. Um, super strong. Our, our top three are incredible. Love those yeah. prospects. Um, three, Justin four Medlock stars. Great class coming here, and then we got some guys down here, and then we have some transfers that I yeah. do want to kind of go over really quick. Yeah. Obviously, the biggest is the Diab- Debate. Debate. But someone that's a sleeper is Gabe Reed, though. Yeah. Coming from Stanford, his stats aren't amazing. But he's on Stanford, though. Well, but Stanford usually has pretty good defense. But he, he was used kind of as a tweener, and we recruited him as a defensive end. He's going to play defensive end for us. He's going to be coming off the edge. Okay. And I think that, you know, this is his senior year. He's going to show out, and I think he's going to do – I think he's going to be under the radar. He's going to push 
really well. And I think he's going to make a good impression this year on Utah fans. And his brother, Karani, oh. is obviously a linebacker. Yeah. So, that's awesome. So, I from just, you. if you see some of these guys right here, some of these players will definitely probably make an impact on the team. And, and hopefully, they're all positive. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and I just, one thing, I uh, one more thing is this man right here. We haven't seen much of him, but he's been hurt for a while. So hopefully he comes back strong yeah. because he could be wow. as you see right here. Yeah, he's a late nights potential. Yeah, him, him and Barton might be dominating people for a while. Wow, third highest recruit in Utah history. That's Clark incredible. Phillips obviously number one. Um, yeah, and it's just really cool to see this man come, and hopefully he can get healthy and love make, to see him play. Make a uh, big. Big impact. His brother is on the team, so it looks like he might. Be, that gives us me some confidence that he'll probably be staying. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited. Hopefully, yeah. this hasn't been playing the whole time in the background. It's it's, it's, it's on you. All yeah, over you. Didn't really Steve realize that. The go. <laughs> um. So, I think that's kind of all we wanted to talk about for the this podcast. You know. Yeah. Like, thank you guys so much for the awesome reception of. Of the, of the first one, yeah, first one. shocking. Honestly. Really blew us out of the water. And if so. you're if you're continue, if you're watching to this point, leave a comment of like who you think is going to be the biggest X factor for you this year. Yeah, we would love Cannon to Park. hear from you. We'd love to hear who who mm -hmm. watched the whole thing. Yeah, seriously. Just, so yeah, thanks thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week. Uh, we're going to try to do this weekly. We just we really enjoy it. You know, it's amazing. It's for our fun, and hopefully, you guys enjoy it too. Yeah. So, so thank you. We're yeah. deciding, trying to decide on a name. Maybe yeah, we'll, hey, if you have any good ideas, put that in the yeah, comments. Drop them in the comments. We so, might just do it. Maybe we'll throw it. We'll give maybe you a we'll shout out. Find a few, throw it on a poll, and we'll yeah, see what exactly. we can do. You know? Exactly. Um, yeah, just like and subscribe. You know, it'll be fun to see you guys mm -hmm. next week, and hopefully, we continue this uprise and have an incredible, incredible year, just like yeah. the University of Utah. Hey, okay. appreciate it. Peace out. See you.